Chapter 22 My mouth burned as bile and stomach acid surged up around my teeth. A red haze replaced the blackness, and a high buzzing noise filled my ears. Then the happy thought that this must be one of the recurring nightmares in which I was a helpless victim of the ostler flooded my mind, washing terror away, and I almost laughed with relief as the red haze faded and the buzzing sound died down. I was rewarded with pale, luminous yellow eyes, moving even closer, and soft fingers like worms crawling over my left cheek, and excited spittle flying like ocean spray. The sago cakes of central Hunan and desert thorn honey with almonds from six degree ostler too. But you must know, a record must be left. Finest of all caviars is row of the Yangtze sturgeon simmered in a decoction of the seeds of the honey locust ostler too, Master Lee shouted. You know very well that you hyperventilate and collapse in gustatory orgasms after you've murdered and mutilated in your inimitable manner, and I've told you a hundred times that it will be the death of you. Now get hold of yourself before you suffer a stroke, and you might begin by unlocking these damp chains. I had lost my mind. That was it. Terror had driven me completely insane, so much so that I imagined I was hearing keys click in locks and the rattle of Master Lee's chains falling to the stone floor. Splayed, fro splayed frog-like fingers slid over my ankles to the lowest locks, and I stopped breathing. Sorry, Ox, Master Lee was saying apologetically. I thought you'd be better off not knowing about this little precaution. You see, before leaving the celestial master's house, when we learned the poor, that poor little maid had been murdered, I asked about the dog. S sir The dog ox. Remember that the maid had been carrying a sick dog the first time we saw her? Well, the dog died. Died? The old man sighed in exasperation, and then relented and said in a kindly voice, Yes, my boy, the dog died. The maid's murderers had been carrying a note, supposedly written by the celestial master, authorizing their admittance, and that was very much on my mind when I went to Devil's Hand to find out who had ordered such an execution. <clears throat> when the celestial master's signature again popped up, I decided I had better plan for the worst. This, I decided, would probably begin to make sense in a month or two, if I survived that long. The eunuchs, Master Lee said, are always after Devil's Hand to find them truly monstrous executioners for their own dungeons. So I arranged for the release of Six Degree Ostler II and his transfer to the prison of the Palace of Eunuchs. I assumed he'd have no difficulty taking over as King of the Butchers, and apparently I was right. A series of moist snickers suggested that Ostler II was enjoying himself. The others were rather jealous, but eventually they saw the effectiveness of my little ways, he said. And felt it as well, no doubt, Master Lee said. I assume they were the ones screaming their heads off just now? Oh, I could have done better, the ostler protested. I could hear the soft, wet smack of his long, frog-like tongue against his flabby, moist lips. One needs time for such things of art, is to be fully honoured. Ostler, you're preaching to the converted, Master Lee said dryly. Don't you recall that we were once guests in your very peculiar cellar? Ox, you might as well know the rest of it. Sixth degree Ostler, too, is to do his best to aid us in escaping from the eunuch's dungeon, and then we're to do our best to aid his escape from the authorities. He gets three months to settle where he likes and get back in business, and then we go after him again. Oh, no. Not, not again, I faintly whispered. But, Ox, it was so exciting, the ostler hissed. Exciting. He thought that ghastly chase had been as entertaining as a horse race or a sled down an icy slope. Suddenly, I was free of chains. I felt like a dog released from a tether, and I almost bolted and ran into a wall. But then the image of a dog stuck in my mind. A small, sick dog on a silken pillow carried by a little maid with silly slippers, and I heard the voice of the celestial master chanting archaic words like a priestly chant. 
if it continues to feel ill, anoint it with clarified fat of the leg of a snow leopard. Give it drink from eggshells of the throstle thrush, filled with juice of the custard apple, in which are three pinches of shredded rhinoceros horn. Apply piebald leeches, and if it still succumbs, remember that no creature is immortal, and you too must die. Master Lee had checked. The dog had succumbed. And you too must die, said the celestial master. You too must die. You too must die. I snapped out of my reverie as the cell door creaked open. Six degree ostler too was tugging on it, and dim torchlight played over his unpleasant features and those of Master Lee. And I trotted out after them into the corridor. Master Lee took the great ring of keys from a hook on the wall and began unlocking cell doors, but prisoners didn't stream out. They were all huddled in corners in fetal positions with their hands over their ears, trying to block the screams the junior executioners had made when the ostler got his hands on them, and I doubled I doubted that any would dare to move. Ostler, last night the Black Watch brought in another prisoner, a girl named Yolan. Do you know anything about her? Master Lee asked. No, I have heard of no girl. Anything unusual? Yes, the hostler said thoughtfully. A number of prisoners condemned to death have been taken from their cells to some other holding place, where they are to be dedicated for a ceremony sometime today. Dedicated? You mean like animals for slaughter? the sage asked. I assume so. Rumor has it that the ceremony is to be held in the eunuch's courtyard at the time of the solstice, the os said Osler, too. Master Lee was silent for a time. Then he whispered, Yes, that might do it. The august personage of Jade is hot-tempered, and if heaven's turn, heaven turns its back... Then he broke from his reveries and snapped, Hurry, we have to get up to the courtyard where that ceremony is to take place. Osler, too, knew part of the underground labyrinth, and what he didn't know firsthand, Master Lee could fill in theoretically, from Architects' plans seen fifty years ago and never forgotten. Like everything else in the Forbidden City, the Golden River is artificial, and a marvelously effective system allows it to pour prettily over a fall, and then travel uphill, so it can splash down another. The water boils down through crevices into connecting caverns, where huge water wheels lift it level by level to the desired height, and then back up to the surface. We slipped through side passages from the dungeons into caverns that remain, reminded me somewhat of the sixth hell. Cursing overseers lashed rows of slaves who powered great horizontal wheels connected to vertical ones, and water splashed incessantly as immense buckets lifted and vanished through crevices in the roof. One good thing was the noise level, which meant we wouldn't be heard as we made our way along a narrow path close to the overseers. The misty spray from the water helped hide us as well, and I was just thinking how lucky we were when overseer turned to another. Did you hear the latest? he shouted. The guilds made it official. They've cancelled the dragon boat race, and they even cancelled the banquets. I could have strangled him. Tragic, even though the banquet of the beggars' guild is totally unimaginative, said Six Degree Ostler too. Eleven courses for beggars of the first and second degrees, seven courses, two jars of wine, and a box of salted meats to take home for third degree beggars, five courses, two jars of wine, and a box of preserved fruits for the fourth degree, and a fifth through seventh degree beggars receive three courses, one wine jar, and no home box. His voice was getting louder and louder as he warmed up, and I tried to clap a hand over his mouth. The trouble was that we had to walk single file, and he could easily fend me off unless I wanted to start wrestling and really give us away. The merchants' guild, on the other hand, is a credit to civilization, and cancellation of their banquet is a national tragedy, the ostler said loudly. Even the lowest degree, seventh through fifth, receive birds' as eggs, birds' as nests, pigs' as trotters, domestic duck, chicken, 
And three kinds of pork. Merchants of the fourth and third degrees are entitled to the same, plus shark fin, salmon, and fried lamb. Three courses are also offered to per second and first degree merchants, who additionally receive bear paws, deer tails, goose, crabs, and mussels. The merchants of the Mongolian guild, however, ostler too, hissed Master Lee. But you must know, yelled Six Degree Ostler too. It must be recorded that guilds are allowed local delicacies, and in Mongolia they add for all degrees slices of mutton dipped in a mixture of raw eggs, beaten with chopped ginger, and then seared over charcoal fires. That did it. Overseers wheeled around and yelled for soldiers, and an officer and ten men appeared out of nowhere and charged with spears. And after that, things got very confusing. We backed into a wall oh, that was almost beneath one of the great rising water wheels, and the spray that closed around us was blinding, and the noise of the wheel and water blocked out almost everything else. Lee the cat hadn't bothered to have Master Lee's throwing knife taken away. After all, we'd, have, we'd be chained to posts, and he was able to fend for himself. I was trying to pick up one soldier and use him as a battering ram against others, but uh, the le that left most of the work to the ostler. And I will freely admit that of all the killers I've encountered, few could come within leagues of sixth-degree ostler too. Those long webbed fingers, those sharp-pointed teeth filling a mouth that could stretch wide enough to swallow a muskmelon, the feet that slipped from sandals to reveal prehensile toes, planned for, stra planned for strangling. That soft, unresisting body, absorbing the hardest blows like a feather pillow, and then falling in folds over a victim and clogging air passages like an obscene shroud of flabby fat. All the while the ostler giggled, mind you, and his reptilian tongue flicked happily over his lewd lips. Still, not even ostler too could ignore blows from a dagger. When I finally staggered up from my pile of bodies and looked around, I saw Master Lee apparently unhurt. But the ostler had been battling the bulk of them, and now he had his arms around the last, the officer, crushing him in a bear hug. The officer was stabbing the ostler in the back with his dagger again and again, and then the two of them toppled to the ground beside the water, wrapped in their final bloody embrace. There was a gasp and a sickening, snapping sound and the officer twitched and lay still. Master Lee knelt beside the ostler and examined him. I'll be damned. He's still alive. The ostler's eyes opened. Ostler too, I wanted to ask you something very important, Master Lee said, speaking slowly and carefully. I have reason to believe that Number 10 Ox has been receiving a message again and again, but the meaning has been disguised because to impart it is taboo. Me? A taboo message. I also have reason to believe that the disguise is formed from slang of the first dragon boat race, slang which your people may still preserve, Master Lee said. The first slang term is mother. Osler II's eyes were partially focused on this world and partially on the next. Mother? Boat race? he whispered. The mother is the same as Tao, the head meaning the boss of the boat. Mother stands on the high prow and sends commands with long flowing scarves. But what you must understand is that the Merchants Guild of Canton offers all degrees an additional course of fo su u, roast pork fish, which actually does taste a little like pork, but is poisonous for if cooked with broccoli. Aslet tu. The next word is grass, Master Lee said urgently. Grass is slang for key. The scarves used by mother to send commands. They're green with white tips and look like tall grass waving in the wind. And in Shanghai, the guild adds herrings called little father's eldest sisters and brothers, ostler too. The word is brothers, Master Lee said. Brothers, yes. Ah, oh, yes. Eight of them. Four in front of the wall and four behind. Lead oarsmen who set the stroke and they wear red bandanas and have red ribbons around their oar handles. And in Shanghai they also had a delicious thread fin called Horse Friend Gentleman Fish, which is... Ostler too. You just mentioned the wall. What is it? Master Lee asked. 
The wall is the raised platform in the center of a dragon bow where the drummer takes the commands of the mother and transmit them with his beat, the ostler whispered. He was sinking fast. Master Lee raised his voice to shout directly in the ostler's ear. Ostler, I assume the ancient War Hing system of parallels was in place, so field means east and stall means west, but I must know about the goat, the sage yelled. What is the goat? I thought Ostler too was dead. Then his eyes opened, and they were perfectly clear, and his voice was firm. The Shao, the steering oarsman of a dragon boat, is always called the goat for two reasons, he said, as if lecturing. First, he butts heads with almost the entire stern while wrestling with his oar, and second, he's an outsider who's expected to take the blame if the boat loses. A goat is a professional, a hired oar. No amateur can handle a hunk of wood that stretches forty feet and weighs for more than a ton. And no amateur can cook for the guild of Nan Viet, where the additional course is lips of Xiang Sang, meaning gibbons, seat in beer, made from juice of the hurricane nut. His eyes popped wide, staring up at something invisible to the living. A spasm caused him to jerk backward, and then Six Degree Ostler Two slid down the bank with the dead officer in his arms. They landed in the water and disappeared. Frothy pink bubbles popped to the surface, and a red stain slowly spread and drifted toward the huge lifting buckets of the wheel. Farewell, Ostler, Master Lee said softly, and the frothing water answered, Burp, burp, burp.